Hey folks, Swag here. Welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Rings home. Today, we're once again talking about Arwen. I've had the chance to sort of test her out and play with her in a number of different game modes for five or six days now, and so I kind of want to just give you my feedback and talk about that in today's video. Um, that'll be the first part of the video, and then in the latter half, um, it'll be, you know, if you're still thinking about maybe gearing her up the three-star version just so you can get that tier five rewards. We'll talk about that a little bit, about how to maybe do that, and then I'll show you some footage from my tier six and what I think the gear requirements you'd need for that are. Um, so here is my Arwen. Uh, I finally got her up to tier eight. Skill levels uh, four and five across the board. I, I really am adamant that you kind of need four, skill level four, um, or three and four for her to really start to become effective. But the first thing I want to say is that she really has helped me in challenges. So let's go take a look at the challenges really quick. There's a number of them, right? So Treasure Trove, she did help me out there. She complimented my light team. And then Dark Relic, where you need Orc and Elf. I have some Orcs, uh, the Isengard 3. And then I will use her as well. And one other random orc. And then the other one is the attacker support. So this wondrous abilities one, you can see I've maxed that out as well. I think she played a critical role in being able to do that. She's a really good support when it comes to that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. The issue with Arwen, I've, I've been saying this, and after five, six days of testing, I still feel this way. You have to dump some amount of resources into her for her to start to shine and become good. Her stats aren't amazing, but they aren't bad. She's got pretty decent health. She actually can hit pretty hard as well, but she, I think she's a kit-based character, and so I think you really need to spend a lot of time putting stuff into her skills, resources into her skills for her to shine. In Arena, I originally, what I had done was I swapped, here's my Arena team, I swapped out Ugluck for Arwen, and so I had the Eowyn lead, and then everybody else here, and no Ugluck. After a few days, that wasn't really working for me, so instead, I actually switched to Ugluck lead, took Eowyn out, and then now this is my current Arena team, it's fine. I would say I can punch up slightly, but not by very much. So she's not an overtuned character. She's not like super overpowered. You know, if you didn't get Arwen, you're now way behind in the meta or you're never going to climb arena, which is good, right? Because that means that they aren't introducing characters that are just absolutely like you have to have them. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep up. But I think she's pretty competent in the arena. Right now, the way I would place her is probably somewhere around B tier. And I think that's mainly because she needs a team around her that complements her kit. And that will eventually be the elves, right? Her special one requires her to have a bunch of boons on her for her to get that turn meter train rolling. And this arena team and some of my other teams for the challenges doesn't toss up as many boons as she would probably like. So I think once she gets a much better team, you know, the elves around her, then I think she'll probably, I'll probably bump her from like a B tier to an A tier. I do think she is going to be a critical part of the Elrond team. I think the two marquee characters are going to be pretty important for the Elrond team, um, meaning that you're going to need Elodin and Arwen. We'll see. Again, we don't have kits, official kits for Elrond or Elodin. So we don't exactly know how everything is going to work out right now. I do kind of want to try out mostly shifting my arena team to elves. So when Elodin comes out, which I think there's going to be a kit release on Thursday, by the way, and then uh, the next week we'll start the marquee event for him. I'll leave a card at the top here where I went over some predictions I had in elf month. Basically, I did a scheduling thing where I show on, on a calendar when I think the events are going to be. The way I had it, it basically lines up perfectly with when Arwen's offers. And you just you, if you go watch the video, you'll see what I mean. But I think it'll be Thursday for this for Elodin's kit, and then next week will be his event. And so we'll know more about you know how she fits into that squad. 
So I'm just guessing here, but I do think she's going to be a pretty important part of it. When Eladin does come out, I'm thinking maybe I'll take Ugluck out again. I, I don't know. Ugluck has such amazing control in Arena that it was, I was, you know, that's why I swapped AON for him. Maybe I'll move Strider. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I also kind of want to work on getting my Elra here up and start moving to maybe like a Ranger type setup in the arena. We'll see. At some point, I think people have to decide whether they want to keep like the big characters in there like Ironhide and uh, the Brute. I am currently of the opinion that for an Elves arena meta, which relies on boons, you're going to want an AoE dispel like what Ironhide has. But that's just a personal sort of prediction or preference. Anyway, let's move to sort of the second half of the video. Bas to summarize, I think she's B tier now. Uh, I think she will be A tier once we get the full squad going around her. This is when I unlocked her during my live stream. And I'll just kind of let this play in the background as I continue to talk. If So I, this is me taking her to five stars, and then I'm going to show you the tier six. And then I'll talk through a strategy that I think you should do, which I didn't do in this video, but I, what I think you should do if you're looking to unlock one of these tiers at much lower gear tier and ability level. Okay. The lowest I've seen for tier 5 is a level 25 Arwen and gear tier 2 and like ability level 2. And so that's the minimum investment I've seen that you would need to basically unlock that tier five and get the 10 light crystals, which might be worth it in that if for that investment and 50 K and uh, I'm forgetting what else was in there. Um, maybe some ability. I'm not on top. Oh, it's maybe battle XP or something like that. So you can invest a little bit. If you've just unlocked Arwen, if you're worried about that, you can just invest a little bit and then still get some of those rewards on the back end. If you are going to, you know, get her to five stars and spend that money, I do kind of think that you need to get to at least G6, level 45. And again, I think it's ability level 4 is where really what you need. In the video here, I'm going after Goblin Chef first. I actually don't think that's a good idea. I, I mean, I complete it, but uh, I don't think that's the best strategy if you want to do this when you're sort of undergeared. I think probably the best strategy is to go for the... Uh, the big goblin guy first, um, King Goblin, whatever his name is, and then maybe either go for the tank or go for the Batmaster in the back row. When you kill Goblin Chef, he sort of does a heal, so you want to maybe save him for last, and then you don't have to kill the tank, but the Batmaster hits really, really hard, so he's probably worth taking out. And then... Um, the big goblin, he doesn't summon like a second goblin when you kill him, so he's also worth taking out first. One, he hits really hard, and he can summon, but also, yeah, see, he just summoned right there. But also, uh, yeah, he doesn't summon another god, or he doesn't, when he dies, he doesn't come have another goblin that sort of comes in after him, and that's worth um, taking him out for. Let's sort of skip ahead here. One of the things about this event that I think a lot of people pointed out is that the skills on some of the characters you get in the event are not the skills on the characters you have in, like, that you can collect that are in your game. Specifically, like, Lomian has different skills in this event than he does in your normal game. That's just something to be aware of. So here, I left the um, Great Goblin at, to last. That's what it is, not King Goblin. Great Goblin to last, and I think that was probably a mistake. I think his damage output is probably too high. So you can do this, like I said, tier 5. You can do this with a very, very low investment into Arwen. Um, tier 6, you're going to need a lot more of an investment, but you do get that 500k gold out, right? And you get 10 epic ability materials, which is the ones past purple. Currently, you can own, those are basically used to upgrade leadership abilities to tier 6, the final... Um, tier for any leadership ability and you need 10 so from this event you would be able to upgrade one leadership ability should probably save that for something like elrond or you know some more important character there's not a leadership ability in the game right now that's crazy but uh that's kind of my thoughts on it i think she's going to be pretty good i am not 
disappointed at the investment that I put into Arwen. I think she's going to be a really good character um, down the line when she has more around her. One last thing I just kind of want to do end on some more speculation for down the line. I also think that what's coming after this will be the Fellowship, and that will include Legolas and Gimli. And I think Legolas is also going to have a spot in this elf squad. So what something that I'm kind of thinking about is, do I want to put a lot of resources into somebody like Lomian? He, his kit's not that good anymore. He does okay damage. Again, he relies a lot on boons, but he doesn't really output a whole lot of boons. So he's he's not adding to the engine, getting the fire going for that team. We'll see. Um, that's just some speculation. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.